Okay, so thank you very much for uh, this invitation. It's really a pleasure and even an honor now that I'm filmed. I'm really, you know, I feel a star. I hope to feel a star even at the end of the lectures. <laughs> so my aim is uh, kind of uh, twofold. So on one side, I'd like to present some theory of unirational variety as far as I know. And on the other side, I'd like to to show how uh, rational connection can help in uh, unirationality questions. So uh, for these reasons, I, I restrict my talk over the complex field. So even if I'll do some uh, kind of detour on non-algebraically closed field at some point, but it will be just a detour, not really the, the main part. And so let me just start defining what a unirational variety is. So, so definition. So X is unirational. If there exists a, a dominant morphism from some projective space onto X. Okay, so somehow our varieties that are covered by some projective space, so it's not difficult to guess that uh, actually you may take, take in simply some hyperplane slice. Uh, you may assume that N, this capital N, is the dimension of X, but that's not important. I mean, it's enough uh, once you have a morphism of this type, you have it also in smaller dimension. And so let's say equivalently. Dominant, okay? And uh, maybe you are uh, wondering uh, why we call this unirational. Because in general, this morphism is not expected to be one-to-one, -one because when it is one-to-one, -one, we call these varieties rational. But in the old time, when this morphism is one-to-one, -one, the, the variety were called birational because there was a bijective, a generically bijective map between these two varieties. And so unirational, so this uni prefix stands for a, a unique direction of the map, so a map that you can't invert. So that's why unirational, even if this map is not generically one-to-one. -one. Okay? And uh, that's a story that started very long ago. And uh, it is quite natural to ask uh, if this is equivalent to rationality. So this is what is called the Luro problem. So is uh, unirationality equivalent to rationality? And it's called Luro problem because uh, Luro proved, uh, so in something like uh, 1869, prove that this is actually the case uh, that it is true when the dimension of x is 1, so when, is a, when x is a curve. And then uh, soon after, in 1895, Castelnuovo did the same for surfaces. And let me, let me stress that I'm working over C, or if you prefer, over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. And this is crucial for Casanova result because then we have uh, Zariski examples of uh, unirational and non rational surfaces or in positive characteristics. Okay. But then uh, there is uh, clearly you tend to ask what happens in higher dimension. And uh, I think that essentially everybody were convinced that this was no more true, but uh, it took a long time, almost a century, to arrive uh, to a famous decade, I mean, to the, essentially the 
1970, where uh, after many attempts to give examples of uh, unirational and non-rational threefold, three totally different approaches gave examples of this type. And these three, three approaches were given by Artin Manford, Clemens Griffith, and Iskowski Manning. And they provided each uh, a different example of uh, unirational trifold, which is not rational. And uh, these three papers were really a breakthrough in, in any imaginable sense. And uh, from these three papers, lots of uh, results and lots of theories uh, uh, were, uh, were born. And uh, I don't want to, so I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, also because uh, somehow, from, from my point of view, so from the point of view of studying unirational variety, these are not the best tools because uh, these three papers are no rationality results. So they proved that some uh, varieties that was already known to be unirational is not rational. But they didn't prove the, the other way around. So something that we know that is non-rational try to prove that it is unirational. Okay? So these are non-rationality results. Okay, and uh, and the reason is that uh, up to now, as f I mean, as far as I know, at least, uh, there is no a uh, concrete theory. So there is no a way, there is no a global uh, approach to the unirationality question. So we have now many examples of unirational varieties, but uh, essentially every example has its own special trick or has its own special computation. So we don't have uh, a global approach to unirationality, unfortunately. And uh, to be sincere, in this three lecture, I'm not going to give you one, okay? I'll only try to, to show that uh, somehow, in some special cases, maybe not that special, a, a bit larger, but I mean, uh, you will decide about this, uh, uh, rational connection can help. And so what is rational connection? So almost around the same time, uh, a notion, because you see, unirationality is something like saying that X is close to be rational. No, it's close to be a rational variety. It's dominated by a rational variety. There is a different, uh, possibly different way to say that X uh, is uh, close to be rational. And it is this notion of rational connection, which is, uh, which can be stated, again, since I'm over C, can be stated quite easily saying that two general points of my variety are connected by a rational curve. So the next definition I want to, I want to write down is the following. So x is rationally connected if two general points x and y in x are on a rational curve. So essentially you have uh, your two points and you have some rational curves connecting them. And uh, well you may you may kind of uh, consider a different version of this, and instead of asking that there is a, an irreducible curve, so a rational curve, you may ask that there is a chain of rational curve connecting them. And so this produces the notion of rationally chain connected. So x is rationally chain connected if there exists a chain of rational curves. Through two general points. And so you have a situation like this. Okay. 
And uh, what is quite interesting is that uh, clearly these two notions are not equivalent in general. No, If you think about a cone over any variety, then a co every cone is rational chain connected because uh, you take two lines of the ruling connecting the two points. But clearly if the, if the base of the cone uh, has not enough rational curve, then there is no way to, to make rationally connected the cone itself. Okay? But uh, a crucial result uh, for uh, smooth varieties is that uh, actually if x is smooth, these two notions are equivalent. And this gives a very nice, uh, very nice properties to rational connection on smooth varieties. And so let me remark this. So if x is smooth, then uh, rational connection is equivalent to rational chain connection. And we will see an application of this uh, in a few minutes. Sorry, you don't need projective. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm always assuming projective, sorry. Yeah, for me, everything is uh, projective. Sorry about that. <laughs> OK. And, um, and so. Let me show you how, I mean, something that maybe you already guessed, but uh, how stronger from this point of view is unirrationality with respect to rational connection. So it's clear it's clear that uh, uh, if x is unirrational, then it is rationally connected. So actually, any variety dominated by a rationally connected one is rationally connected because the image of a rational curve is always a rational curve. And so you simply take the pre-image of two points, uh, you take the curve on top, and then you project down. But let me write down this proposition. So let. Uh, a, B, C be a triple of integers such that, uh, let's say, 0 less than C less than N, which is the dimension, well, no, then, then not important, less than N, then, uh, is there a question? OK. Then there exists uh, a subscheme. Let me call it WN ABC inside the Hilbert scheme of PN such that uh, such that if we consider the, the general point uh, in this WN ABC, so why? Uh, well, general point, then y is rational, and Wn ABC is rationally connected, and further, whatever uh, z inside Pn, zero-dimensional scheme, uh, reduced, sorry, reduced zero-dimensional scheme of length B. So for any of this, uh, there exists a sub-variety of this W, so some Wz inside Wn ABC such that WZ is rationally connected, dimension of WZ is greater or equal than A, and uh, 
the general the general element in wz contains z so if it's possible to see the two black words together yeah so you see what is saying this proposition is saying that uh, on pn that's not something unexpected i think so on pn whatever reduced zero dimensional scheme you choose uh, you are able to produce a sub variety in the Hilbert scheme in such a way that uh, you have a rationally connected uh, sub varieties of uh, ah sorry probably i didn't put ah here sorry so with uh, because otherwise c was a co-dimension of y equal to c so a sub variety of the Hilbert scheme parameterizing co-dimension c sub rational sub variety of pn that contains this uh, this reduced scheme so for instance in the in rational connection you are simply saying that given two points uh, there is a curve so you have c equal to n minus 1 and uh, b equal to 2 okay but yeah sorry so when you say w is rationally connected you mean all elements in it are or? I mean, so I'm over C, so if two elements... Uh, I mean, W parameterizes... Ah, no, Y is the general point. Y is the general you point. You wrote that W is rational. Yeah, yeah. It's himself, so W is a, is a sub-scheme of uh, the Hilbert scheme. And as a, a sub-variety of the Hilbert scheme, is rationally connected. This is what I mean. So I'm saying that uh, given any... Uh, sub scheme Z, if you want, or, or even without this, uh, I have uh, a lot of rationally connected sub variety of the Hilbert scheme parameterizing rational sub varieties of Pn. But maybe I'll give you a proof. So maybe during the proof, it's it's easier to understand maybe also the statement. What's the condition? Why you wrote the element at the end? Uh, that's the C. So the codimension of Y is C. Of y. Yeah. So these are the three integers I'm uh, I'm considering. Okay. And uh, well, let's list here. So this is a sort of uh, huge version of rational connection, if you want. Okay. And so the proof. Uh, the proof. The proof is quite simple because you see. Let us do it by induction on the codimension. Okay, so when c is one, we are looking for rational divisors of p n passing through a bunch of points. Okay, but then you can produce them easily simply considering monads. No, so polynomials of degree d with a point of multiplicity d minus one. So that's a linear system. So it's a rational variety, and you can impose as many conditions as you want as, as soon as you you let increase the degree of the hypersurface. So for uh, for c equal to one, it is enough to consider linear system of uh, well, let's say, let me call it monads. Oh, sorry, not monads, monoids. So IE is something defined like uh, x not, uh, well, let's say x not uh, g d minus 1 plus g d equal to 0 with g i in c i. Okay. So these are, uh, this is clear linear space inside the Hilbert scheme of divisors. And uh, they are all rational. Okay, so as soon as d is big enough, then you can always, uh, given any subscheme z, you can always find the linear system of this type containing your z. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, x1. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so in this way, you you produce the what you need for c equal to one. But then you see. 
to do it in higher co-dimension, it's enough again to play the same game on the, on the divisor itself. So to increase C, it is enough to consider Uh, to consider a divisor H given by x naught g to the d minus 1 plus g to the d equal to 0. So this is inside Pn, but it is uh, itself birationally to a Pn minus 1. Okay? And therefore, codimension 1 here is just codimension 2 there. And so you can build up again with the monoids inside Pn minus 1 to get codimension 2 inside here and so on. Okay? And so in this way, this produces, you see, lots of uh, rationally connected sub-varieties of uh, the Hilbert scheme parameterizing rational sub-varieties passing through. Is it okay now? <laughs> so, so the, the general element in WZ is also rational. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So general intensity and mm -hmm. so as I said, it's a huge version of uh, rational connection, but clearly if you so we did it here for, for any z. Okay. But if we just don't think about any g, but we think to a general z then this applies to anything that is dominated by Pn. Because once you have a map uh, from Pn onto something, then the general Z scheme, I mean, when you restrict this map to the general Z scheme, uh, is a morphism. And on this morphism, you can apply the same trick and go down to the, to the Hilbert scheme of the, of the dominated variety. And so... Sorry, I was still confused in this. Yeah. In the last time you say the general element of Wz contains that. That means all the elements of Wz contain that. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Once you have it, I mean, that's a, that's a close condition, so. Well, I would like to ask the same question with regards to the first part. Uh, does every uh, member of the family W, A, B, C, N? Uh, that's a bit more, the, that's, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, because the problem is that, uh, so let me see. Uh, so if the parameter space is smooth, uh, then you are okay. Because uh, as we will see, rational, con I mean, we, it's enough, I mean, you can, but, but if the parameter space is not smooth, then, I, then I'm not that sure. So, for instance, uh, that's an example I'll, uh, I'll give you later on, but uh, you may have a degeneration of this type to something that is not rationally connected. No? I mean, uh, you're asking that why to be rational, not just rational. Yes, 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 rational. But, I mean, uh, you may have degeneration that is not rationally connected, so it's not even rational. Okay? Sorry, maybe that, that's, that's something you will explain later, but if I have a degeneration, a specialization of rational rights, like over, over discrete valuation, uh -huh. the generic fiber is rational. Yeah. Do I know that this, yeah, it I is know not known? It is not. That, that's something I'm going to say. So not, not very much about this. Well, essentially nothing is known in this direction. But this is what we expect or we don't expect? Well, you know, that's, that's a difficult. Cause so essentially... I have, uh, let's say, lots of expectation, but they change uh, day by day. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this area, I actually don't have fixed expectation, let's say. But, uh, so one of my points, so I, I want to, I put this proposition, I mean, maybe it's not even a proposition, it's just an observation on the blackboard, because uh, somehow it will be related to what I'll say in the last lecture about quartic hypersurfaces. And uh, there, I mean, uh, the unirrationality of the generic quartic hypersurface is not expected in, for, by the general, uh, by the general uh, I mean, people working on this. But uh, as we will see, they, they satisfy a proposition similar to this one. So if they are not uh, unirrational, then they are very close to B. And so it's difficult to, I mean, the answer is no to your question, but uh, I, I'd like to say that is so. There are many examples in different directions, so it's really difficult to, to say. In this question, if I replace rational by unirational, then that's fine, right? No, 
It's not no. So no, n the answer not. Uh, sorry, the answer is not no in the sense that it's no, but uh, it is not known. <laughs> but let me. So if you if you let me go on a bit, I'll uh, I'll I'll put something on the blackboard that maybe will help. So remark. So if uh, x is unirational, then the same proposition is true for uh, z general. Okay, and that's nothing really deep. Okay, and uh, even more if we if we drop a bit here, so still uh, we dropped already the n z and we take the general one, but here we drop the c equal to one and we ask from from two on. Then this is even true for uh, a larger subset of varieties. So if we also drop c equal to one, so we assume oops, one less than c less than n with the same statement and so on, then uh, a similar proposition is true if uh, you have, uh, let me write it in commas, enough rational divisors. So what do I mean by this? So we have still the proof there. So essentially we are uh, doing everything on a divisor, on a rational divisor. So if I have uh, a rational divisor passing through a general uh, z, then I can play the same game. I don't know about what is the parameter space of this rational divisor, but I can play the same game once I'm inside z. And so uh, if I drop uh, c equal to 1 and I start from c equal to 2, then could I mention 2 are fulfilled by the rational divisor passing through z. Okay, and uh, as I said, this will be really the case of quartic hypersurfaces. Okay, and uh, so so this is really, really much more than asking rational connection. But uh, and this is the only the only statement I'll do in this three lecture about this. Uh, uh, this uh, strange relation between unirationality and rational connection, uh, it is really a pity that we do not uh, know any example of uh, rationally connected non-unirational variety. Okay? So despite this, uh, this can, can be seen uh, as a huge difference, uh, there is no, no example known. And uh, again, let me say, I'm not going in this direction, so I don't want to, to convince you that one is the, I mean, that uh, either there is or either there is not, that I have uh, examples in mind and so on. So I have really no idea of what to think about. So it's a very thought uh, that uh, the two notions are equivalent. That's reported by Segre in a paper, Beniamino Segre in a paper, while Fano thought that they are different and also suggested an example of a conic bundle. That is uni sorry. That is uh, rationally connected, but not unirational. So I don't want to be against uh, neither of the two, and so I, I keep my, my freedom. Okay. So now I want to to show you some properties of both rational connection and unirationality, and somehow I want to compare them to show you how much we know about uh, rational connection and uh, how few we know about uh, unirationality. Oh, no. No. And, uh, okay. Application. So we already saw that uh, rational connection works uh, much better for smooth varieties than for singular ones. 
And so I'll assume that uh, our varieties are smooth for the moment. So assume x is smooth. Then uh, we have the following theorem, which has been proved by Campana and, uh, well, Collar, Mia, Okamori. I mean, lots of people worked in, in this direction at a certain time, which gives uh, equivalent conditions, uh, let's say, equivalent local condition of rational, to be rationally connected. So, so the following. are equivalent. So x is rationally connected. So there is a morphism from p1 uh, to x such that, uh, well, to c on x1, such that the pullback of Tx is ample, and uh, there exists a curve C in X uh, such that the, uh, sorry, C rational curve in X, such that the normal bundle C in X is ample. So this is a sort of local uh, condition to be, to be rationally connected, because think about this one, so it's enough to, to look at one curve, a neighborhood of the curve, so the normal bundle is ample, so these curves move and, and cover your, uh, your variety, okay? And we also have uh, a local version uh, of unirrationality, which is maybe less known, and we will see immediately the difference between these two. So this has been observed, I think, uh, for the first time by Ionesco and Russo, but maybe you, you have previous uh, knowledge of this. And so x is unirrational if and only if there exists uh, oops, c inch x of x. So with this, I mean uh, a family of uh, one cycle passing through x uh, such that so c is dominant. Uh, with this, I mean that uh, the map from the universal family over c to x is dominant. And the general curve in c is rational. Smooth at x and uniquely determined by its tangent direction at x. So you see, this is still a, a local criteria, no? So you're looking, yeah? They say, so what's the conversion flow of little x? Yes. Uh, it means that they're, they're passing through x. No, but this is for general, general x or one no. x? Or there exists. There, there exists some like x. One point x. Yeah. And then the second question is, in two, it's uniquely determined, uniquely determined among the curves parameterized by c or among all? Among the curves parameterized by c. Mm -hmm. So the general curve in c is uh, uniquely determined. So. So you may, you may think of this, uh, so if you have, uh, so in one direction it's very simple. Now if it is uh, unirational, then you have a map from Pn onto this map, uh, onto this variety. And so you keep just a point where the map is well defined uh, and it is a localized morphism. And then you take the, the, the sub-variety of lines passing through this point, you project down and you are done. Because uh, the generic line goes to a smooth rational curve that is uniquely determined by its uh, tangent direction. And you only have finitely many lines that the ones that pass through the, so the map is generically finite, so you have finitely many lines passing through the other point of the projection. And this gives you some singular fiber. So, sorry, some singular curve in this family. But for the general one, it's okay. The, the, the tangent is uniquely determined and you're right. So, and now you prove the, the theorem 
the other direction, which is, I mean, the most important. So the proof is that, uh, so consider the universal family over C. Oh, I should start from a bit below. So consider the universal family over C. So now we have the cycle map on 2x, which is dominant by, by our assumption. And, uh, and so you can blow up x at x. And then this clearly induces a map. Uh, I mean, by the square diagram, we induce a map here. Let me call this ux. OK. And what is the point of our assumption? So this family sits in the Cho scheme of x uh, at the point x. So in particular, it has a section, the point that is mapped onto x. So inside here, we have a section E. OK. So E is the section associated to the evaluation at x, OK? And so this section goes up here as well. Let me call this, well, ax if you want. And then uh, our last condition, so the fact that the tangent direction, the term is unique, so the, the curve is uniquely determined by its tangent direction at x, the generic curve, tell us that if we call this map chi, so by, let me put a and b here, so by b, by b, if we restrict chi to e of x, then we have uh, uh, e of x over pn minus 1, where n is the dimension of x. Then we have a birational map from e x onto pn minus 1, no? the exceptional divisor of the blow up of the point, because uh, the general curve in C is uniquely determined by its tangent direction. So you can read it uh, on the blow up. There is a unique curve over the general point of E. So you have uh, that EX is rational, but then uh, EX is a section of this guy. And so this, this tells you that C is rational and U is rational, and so X is unirrational. So this implies that uh, C is uh, rational. And this implies that u is rational, and this implies that x is unirrational. So let me stress that uh, if, uh, in the assumption of, uh, of this theorem, we substitute this general with any, then you get a rationality condition. So a variety is rational if and only if uh, you have a family like, like this, such that any curve in C is uniquely determined by its tangent direction and is smooth. OK? And that's really the, the theorem of uh, UNESCO and Rousseau, this rationality criteria, criterion. And uh, this is simply an observation. But still, uh, you see, that's, as far as I know, the unique uh, local criteria of unirrationality, I, I know. Can you say the function on the on the This, this assumption, I mean. No, but so the problem is something, right? Well, I mean, I, I'm asking that the map is dominant, so I, I just have some dominant map. Uh, I mean, everything is. Uh, yes, I mean, it's good. so that's an irreducible. Uh, com I mean, okay. I mean, uh, C is dominant uh, and closed. Okay. Yes, yes, I understand what you mean. OK, thank you very much. OK, but still, uh, these two are very different. And especially the, the applications that we can draw for them, for them are, are very different. So for instance, from here, we get a very nice behavior of rational connections in families. So the other theorem. For rational connection is that uh, so let uh, 
let me call it. Uh, are there any question? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. but now you're not really confused me. Why do you have to add close? May I just, can just close up and condition B is still satisfied? No, no, but you, I was talking about this uh, rationality. What, what? You said that the rationality, but the rationality. Not the, so sorry, I, I probably I confuse you. So if you don't put closed uh, in the rationality statement, so the one I, I said later is that uh, if you drop uh, this general and you ask any, then it's a rationality statement, but then you have to ask closed. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. This theorem I can... Yeah, yeah, this theorem is... Uh, okay, closed for rationality. Okay. So let, uh, let me call it pi from x over b a smooth family. And here smoothness is really important as we will see in, in a couple of examples I'll, I'll tell you. So in this condition, so the locus of rationally connected fibers is both open and closed in B. Okay, so the locus of rationally connected fibers of a smooth family is uh, both open and closed. And how do you see it? Well, you see, closedness uh, is simply the following. So you have uh, a rationally connected family, so you have uh, a rational curve, and when you degenerate in the family, this becomes a chain of rational curves. But since my fibers are all smooth, we already observed that uh, for smooth varieties, rational connection is equivalent to rational chain connection, and so even the limit variety is rationally connected. Okay? And for openness, uh, we have this ample condition, so essentially, you, you pick up uh, an ample, sorry, a, a, a rational curve with ample normal bundle in a fiber, and then uh, the ampleness allows you to perturb it in, a, in, a, in an open set and gives you the openness. But uh, let me show this, uh, well, not show, but let me remark. Smoothness. Is crucial for both. So, for instance, you can take. Uh, is this smooth? Sorry? Is this smooth? Is that there? Yes, everything is smooth here. Everything. I mean, smooth family, I mean, uh, all fibers are smooth and uh, everything is smooth. But that should be the smoothness of B should be essential. We can always resolve. Oh, that's, yeah. that's the. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you resolve, then you don't know what happens on, uh, maybe, maybe you introduce some singular fiber, no? No. <coughs> you use this change. Yeah. 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 And, it's, and you get some, ah, yes, you get some, yeah, okay. So, then you lose the open. Right. But, uh, so, what is not a, not a map? Yeah. You don't need this. No? Okay. So, you don't need it. <laughs> There are people that know much more than me about rational connection in this room. So if they say that you don't need it, I, I agree. <laughs> and so, you see, you can take this example. So you see, this is a family of cubic surfaces. This is in. And so you see the general element uh, is a smooth cubic surface. And clearly, it is rational, so in particular, it's rationally connected. But then, when you go to the, to the t equal to zero, you get a cone over an elliptic curve. Okay? And this is clearly not rational, uh, not rationally connected, sorry. And so, you have an example in which if you drop smoothness, uh, you lose a closedness. And similarly, if you take uh, x naught, x3, uh, no, x naught cube, x, well, x1 plus uh, oops, four. Again inside P3, then this time 
The general element of this family is a quartic surface in P3, so it's not rationally connected. But when you get to the zero k, oh, probably I, I put the, yeah, shot, sorry, I had to put the t here. When you go to the, to the zero, then you, you kill this one, so you get a quartic with a triple point, uh, which is rational. So in this case, you have a family where you have one member that is uh, rationally connected, rational, and uh, it doesn't perturb, so you, don't, you lose openness. So here you lose closedness, and here you lose openness. Okay. And so what do we know, by going back to answer to, to your question, Daniel, so what do we know about unirrationality in this, uh, in this family setting? The knowledge is very poor, and the only result I know is a result of uh, De Ferney and Fusi that prove the following. Oops. Let, uh, again, pi from x to b a family. And here we only assume B connected. Then uh, the locus of uh, unirational fibers is uh, a countable union. of locally closed subsets. So again, so you see, somehow we have this, uh, how to say, this mainstream. So on rational connection, when we ask a smoothness, uh, we impose a condition, but we gain a lot. On the unirrationality side, we don't put a smoothness uh, and we get much less. So you could ask, why, why don't you ask smoothness? Because then you, you have exactly the same result. So the, the problem with unirrationality, as far as I understood it, is that uh, we are not able yet to uh, use a smoothness uh, in the arguments. So it's, it's clear that you can't have for unirrationality a statement like this uh, without smoothness, because you don't have it for rational connection. No? But there is n not a way to, to, to plug into the smoothness of this fiber to improve the, the result. Okay. And so how you prove it? I, I think if I understood well Antoine's lecture this morning, I'm not that sure, because both for mathematics and both for friends, for my friends. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's something, uh, that's your Chevalier theorem, essentially. Let, let me show you why, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But so, so the idea, and that's a, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't quote it. So that's, a, I said it, but I didn't write. So Defernay and Fusi. Okay, so that's a theorem of Defernay, or at least, again, this is a special case of a, of a more general theorem of Defernay and Fusi. So the idea is the following. So a, a dominant map. So a dominant map, let's say, well, f from pn onto some xt, well, onto some x for the moment, then we'll, put the, we'll plug the family in, is uh, uniquely determined by, by its graph, so by a sub-scheme of the product. So IE, a subscheme Z inside PN cross X, uh, such that uh, when you restrict the canonical projections onto Z, then you have a barational map uh, onto PN and a dominant map onto Z. So such that the canonical projections restrict to Z as birational and dominant 
respectively. So uh, if, if, you, if you do it in families, that's equivalent to say so for families. For families, I have uh, z, I have some z inside, let's say, my x times over b, pn times b, OK? Such that uh, when I restrict to every file, so that zt has these properties. And if I understood well, Chevalier theorem tells us that this one is uh, definable, and so it is constructible, and therefore the projection onto B is constructible again by, by Chevalier. And so, when you, this is a, since the, the Hilbert scheme has a, a countab countably many components, you get countably many locally closed subsets. Okay? And, uh, and okay, sorry for, uh, for being over time. But uh, tomorrow we'll uh, we'll try. To, okay, so we'll uh, we'll try to use uh, uh, rational connect. So somehow this is kind of uh, a way to show what we know about rational connection, what we know about unirrationality, and why it's used. To, it's good to use uni, uh, rational connection to prove unirrationality because we know much more about this. Okay, thank you. Uh, so about uh, closedness of uh, rationally chain connectedness. So you said what you said. That's always okay. Uh -huh. Is it? No, it's it? no. Uh, so uh, my my assumption is that the family is smooth. Yeah, so I every know. fiber is smooth. So I know but that the argument you gave was that uh, yeah, the central fiber is the fiber. The central connected. fiber, let's say, is rationally chain connected. Yes. So my but question is: uh, so uh, being rationally chain connected is a closed condition always. Is ah, yes. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Okay, it's not time to get. Okay.